Today we're going to talk about electrical cells, EMF, and internal resistance. What we commonly call a battery is really an electrical cell. And it's an electrical cell because it has one chamber. One chamber for producing electrical energy. Whereas a car battery contains several of these chambers, so it has several cells connected together to provide more electrical energy. And we have two types of cell. We have what are called primary cells, and we would simply think of these as the disposable batteries. And then we have secondary cells, which we commonly call rechargeable batteries. Let's try to give a very simplified explanation as to how a battery works. So we could build a very simple battery just by taking a beaker and filling it with an electrolyte. So we're going to have an electrolyte liquid inside of our beaker. So remember, an electrolyte is filled with positive and negative ions. And those positive and negative ions can flow through the electrolyte. That's what carries the charge in electrolyte, the positive and negative ions. Very different from a conducting wire, which is the electrons that carry the charge. So what we can do is place two metals, we'll say metal A and metal B, inside of our electrolyte. We call these electrodes. And of course, within our electrolyte, we've got lots of ions. That would include some positive ions of metal B and some positive ions of metal A. Remember that metals tend to give up electrons and take on a positive charge. And when they take on a positive charge, they will leave the surface of the electrode and go into the electrolyte. But different metals give up electrons more or less easily. So let's suppose in this case here that metal B is grabbier for electrons than metal A. That is, it doesn't give up electrons as easily. So metal B is grabbier for electrons than metal A. Well, what that means is that if I connect a nice easy path between A and B, I'll just use a conducting wire here between A and B, then electrons would flow from A to B, to the grabbier metal. And we could put a load resistance in here. That load might be a flashlight or an electric radio, etc. And by having those electrons flow through the device, we can power the device. But what's going to happen here is the electrons flow out of metal A is you're going to get more positive A ions. These A atoms lose electrons and they become positive ions. And when they become positive ions, they go out into the electrolyte solution. On the other side over here, we're getting kind of a buildup of negative charge over here. And what's going to happen is these positive ions from B will join this electrode. They'll pick up a, one of these extra electrons and join this electrode here. So overall, what's going to happen is metal B, this electrode, is going to get bigger because you have more and more B atoms joining onto it. Metal A is going to get depleted. It's going to get smaller because atoms from metal A are going out into the electrolyte. And so overall, what you see here is you've got positive charge flowing from A to B because of the ions in the electrolyte. And remember, the flow of negative charge is always the opposite direction of the current. So we've really got a complete circuit here. Now, eventually, now eventually, electrode B here is going to be too built up and won't accept any more ions, or we're just going to run out of electrode A here, and that will mean that we've discharged our battery. We've used up all the chemical energy stored in the battery to create electrical energy. Now, if we happen to have a rechargeable battery, that means it's built out of materials such that you can reverse this reaction. And of course, the way that you reverse the reaction is to push the electrons in the opposite direction. So we'd connect a charger and push the electrons in the opposite direction. This electrode will now be negatively charged 
and the positive A ions from the electrolyte will move in the opposite direction and join back up with the electrode so we can build it up again. And because electrons are being lost from this electrode, the B electrode, B atoms will move out into the solution as B plus ions. So we're just reversing the direction of the current when we recharge a battery. You've probably noticed when you have a fresh set of batteries, you've got a little more juice. Your flashlight burns a little bit brighter. That's because the voltage is a little bit higher when the battery's new. But for most of the lifetime of the battery, it operates at a relatively constant voltage. And your device will operate properly at that voltage. And then when the battery begins to die out, it happens rapidly. And that's more or less true with all types of batteries. For some, the voltage decays a little bit more gradually. And, and for those, you could actually use the open circuit voltage to determine how much capacity you have left in your battery. Now, in the past, whenever we drew a battery, we drew it like this. We'd have two terminals, a positive terminal and a negative terminal, and then we just did this representation for a cell. So that was our basic representation for a battery. But and now we're getting a little more sophisticated. We know a little bit more about what goes on inside a cell, and we should really draw it a little bit differently. We should still have a positive and negative terminal. That doesn't change. We should still have our cell. But now we're going to include an internal resistance. I'll use a little r for the internal resistance. What's causing that internal resistance? Well, it's just a resistance to the flow of ions within the electrolyte. And the higher the quality of the battery, the lower that internal resistance. We've also got to make another distinction here. Up to now, we just talked about the battery voltage. It was a 9 volt battery or it was a 1.5 volt battery. Now we're going to change the name. We're going to call this the EMF. We're going to use this Greek letter epsilon to represent what's called the EMF. Now EMF really stands for electromotive force, but it's not a force at all. So usually we just stick with the acronym EMF and we forget about what EMF stands for. But the physical meaning of EMF is that it's the voltage of a source. It doesn't have to be an electrical cell as a source. Piezoelectric crystals are a source of electricity. We can also change the magnetic flux through a loop and create another source of electricity. So the EMF is the voltage of a source when no current flows. So let's see what that means. Let's redraw our battery with the internal resistance. Here's our EMF. Here's our internal resistance. But now we're going to attach a load. This is a load resistor, RL. Now if we had an infinite resistance here, no current would flow. And therefore, there would be no voltage drop across the internal resistance. And the voltage at the terminals would be the EMF. However, if our resistance here is not infinite, we're going to get some current. And we're going to get a voltage drop across the load resistor. I'm going to call that voltage drop VR. Current's also flowing through the battery, which means we're going to get another voltage drop. I'm going to call it V little r. That's the voltage drop across the internal resistance. So now our EMF does not equal VR, it does not equal the voltage across the load. So we might have a 1.5 volt battery here, but once we start drawing current, if we put our voltage probes across the battery, we get a voltage lower than 1.5 because some of the voltage is being dropped across the internal resistance. So we have to apply Kirchhoff's voltage loop rule and that EMF of the battery will equal the voltage drop across the load plus the voltage drop across the internal resistance. And that's going to be a very important idea for us. Now if we want to measure internal resistance experimentally, it's fairly easy. 
Step number one is to measure the open circuit voltage of the battery. So if that's our battery, simply put your voltage probes across the battery. Remember that a voltmeter effectively has infinite resistance. That means no current is going to flow out of the battery and whatever voltage you measure is going to equal the EMF of the battery. So our EMF will be equal to the voltage reading. And just to put some numbers in, let's say we did that reading and we got epsilon equals 1.5 volts. The second step is to attach a fairly small load resistor. The reason you want a fairly small load resistor is so that you're going to get lots of current. And that's going to mean that you're going to get a significant voltage drop across the internal resistance. If you want to know how big the internal resistance is, then you're going to need a fairly significant voltage drop across the internal resistance. So our second step is to attach a load resistor. And just so we can work with some numbers, let's make up a value for our load resistor. Let's say our load resistor was equal to 5 ohms. Step 3, measure the current through the circuit and the voltage across the load. So here's our circuit. We're going to place an ammeter in our circuit and a voltmeter across our load. And let's suppose that we got a voltage reading there, VR equal to, say, 1.3 volts. And let's say our current through the circuit came out to be 0 0.25 amperes. Then step four is going to be to calculate the internal resistance. The EMF has to equal the voltage drop across the load plus the voltage drop across the internal resistance. We said the EMF was 1.5 volts and we said the voltage across the load was 1.3 volts. We can use Ohm's law and say that voltage is equal to current times the resistance. So the voltage drop across the internal resistor would be the current through the circuit times the size of the internal resistance, which means we're going to be able to solve for that internal resistance. The current is 0 0.25 amps. So our internal resistance is going to be 1.5 minus 1.3, or 0 0.2 volts, divided by 0 0.25. So you end up with an internal resistance of 0 0.8 ohms. Here's a typical question involving internal resistance. Pause the video, give the question a try, come back for the answer. So the open circuit voltage is 1.44 volts. That means our EMF here is 1.44 volts. So if that EMF is equal to the voltage across the load resistor plus the voltage across the internal resistance, then we've got 1.44 volts is going to equal 1.41 volts plus VR. So VR, the voltage across the internal resistance, is going to be 0.03 volts. Now, using Ohm's law, VR has to equal the current through the circuit times the internal resistance. So if we can find out the current through the circuit, we can determine the internal resistance. And of course, the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. So across the 50 ohm resistor, the current is going to equal the voltage, 1.41 volts, divided by the resistance, 50 ohms. Divide that out, you get 0 0.028 2 amperes. So now we can solve for the internal resistance. It's going to equal the voltage across the internal resistor divided by the current through both resistors. So we get 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.0282 and you should get an answer of about 1.1 ohms as the internal resistance of the battery.
Here's an IB question involving internal resistance, and it tended to give students a lot of difficulty. See if you can work it out. Pause the video, try it yourself, come back for the answer. So we know the EMF of the battery has to equal the voltage across the load plus the voltage across the internal resistance. Voltage is joules per coulomb. And the current's got to be the same everywhere throughout a series circuit. So it's got to be the same amount of charge that flows through the battery, the internal resistor, and the motor. So for the load, the motor, voltage is joules per coulomb. It's going to be 9,000 joules per 450 coulombs. For the internal resistance, it's 1,800 joules, but the same amount of charge. So now we've got an expression for the EMF of the battery, and it's going to equal 10,800 joules divided by 450 coulombs, which comes out to be 24 joules per coulomb, or 24 volts. So the correct answer is D. In this IB question, we have an electrical cell that's driving current through a variable resistor. So if we've got a big resistance here, not much current flows. There'll be a small voltage drop across the internal resistor, which means we'll get a bigger voltage drop across the variable resistor. This a voltage being plotted here is just the voltage across the battery, which is the same as the voltage across the load resistor. That's because this here is really a continuous piece of wire. Ammeters have zero resistance. And this here is a continuous piece of wire. So everywhere along a continuous piece of wire is the same voltage. We have to have the same voltage across our battery as across the load resistor. So as we decrease R at variable resistor, the current becomes larger and the voltage drops because there's a bigger voltage drop across the internal resistor. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. Okay, part A, we want the EMF of the cell. Now an EMF is defined as being the voltage when there's no current. So here's zero current and at that point the voltage is 1.5. Therefore the EMF of the battery is 1.5 volts. We're next asked to find out the current through the entire circuit when we reduce this variable resistor down to zero. Now if we reduce that variable resistor down to zero, then this voltmeter up here is going to read zero because there's no resistance going around this path here. And you can't get a voltage drop across zero resistance. So let's look along the voltage axis until we get a voltage of zero and read off the corresponding current value. Well, we're going to have to extend our line and find out the horizontal intercept if we want to determine that current. And the current seems to be about 1.25 amperes. Lastly, we're asked to calculate the internal resistance of the battery. Well, we know the EMF has to equal the voltage across the battery plus the voltage across the internal resistor. What we're going to do is take a point off our graph. Any point, I'm going to choose this point right here, which is a current of 0 0.42 amps and a voltage of 1.0 volts. So let's put the values in. My EMF of the battery, 1.5. Voltage across the battery, that's 1 volt at that point. The voltage across the internal resistor is going to equal the current through the circuit times the internal resistance. So I'm going to get 0 0.5 volts is equal to the current, 0 0.42 amps, times that internal resistance. So now we just need to divide and we should get an answer there of about 1.2 ohms. So the internal resistance of the battery is about 1.2 ohms. And one last note. In some devices, 
in particular those tube flashlights, we connect the batteries to the cells in series. When we do that, we're also adding those internal resistances in series. So we're going to get a larger internal resistance in series. But when we connect in parallel, we're also connecting those internal resistors in parallel. And remember, when we add resistors in parallel, we get a smaller total resistance because there's more paths. So when we connect our batteries in parallel, like so, we get a smaller internal resistance. In that case, you don't get the advantage of increasing your voltage, but you'll have less energy losses due to internal resistance. In this case, we'd be adding up the voltages. We'd get a larger voltage available to drive the current. However, we'd have bigger energy losses due to the increased internal resistance. So let's summarize the key ideas from the video. Let's say, number one, there's two types of batteries. There's a primary and secondary batteries, meaning disposable or rechargeable. Idea number two, cells have an internal resistance. And generally, older batteries will have more internal resistance. Three, EMF is the voltage of a source when no current flows. So we can measure the EMF simply by connecting a infinite resistance voltmeter across the terminals of the battery. And finally, we can solve for the internal resistance using the idea that the EMF will have to equal the voltage across the load plus the voltage drop across the internal resistance. And then we can use Ohm's law as needed. So we might write that voltage drop across the internal resistance as equal to the current in the circuit times the internal resistance. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.